us in the ring. In this gospel passage, there are many characters which we can focus on. We have a, the principal characters, but uh, many of us at times don't realize it's, it's perhaps a good thing to do to ask ourselves in such parables, um, who am I? Where am I in this parable? Um, we always want to perhaps be uh, someone different. We want to be one of the good guys. But that's a good question. Are we one of the good guys? Um, the first thing that kind of draws itself to my attention is this, you know, the, they come, they've got these, you know, the four gentlemen bringing the paralytic and they're greeted by a crowd. And how often it seems to happen in, in one story or another, you know, of our Lord. And uh, actually, it's, I think I said it's a parable. It's not really, a par it's not a parable. It's, you know, this is one of the miracles that our Lord ha works. And how often we find this is, it's kind of a repeated theme. There's a crowd of people that are trying to prevent someone, whether it's a conscientious act, no one, we don't really say it's a conscientious act, although sometimes it is. Keep quiet, keep still. Don't, shut up. Be, be quiet. And, son, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Um, so this is this courage that we may ourselves find that we need to have as we're trying to draw closer to the Lord, um, there has to be that determination to fight against the crowd, um, however, whatever it takes. Um, and our Lord is the one who affirms the goodness and uprightness of these acts of not losing the sight of our ultimate destination as well, a roof can be repaired. <laughs> uh, what's more important, a soul or the roof? <laughs> Soul's more important, rip up the roof, <laughs> we're gonna let this guy down. Um, and this is one of the, not always does it happen. I mean, the, in the case of, uh, you know, I made a reference to the blind man, you know, Jesus, son of David. Sometimes a person may have the means to call out for help, but other times it requires the help of others. Not just the faith of the individual. You know, our Lord uh, recognized their faith. It doesn't say the faith of just the four, but all five. The paralytic had to have the humility to accept to be carried along to our Lord. And this, you know, sometimes we don't realize this, but there is a, a real reciprocal charity. It's kind of a funny way to talk about charity because it's the charity of the one who's receiving, being willing to receive. Um, you know, we do, I sometimes talk about, you know, in the case of, say, some of the poor, the true poor, there's a dignity that we need to preserve you know, we need to allow them to have this dignity to, to want to seem, well, to want to be useful, even if it seems to, you know, it's, it's a seems to be useful. Um, we need to try to conserve that human dignity that everybody really has, to encourage that want to be useful in some way. You know, even if it's, you know, all right, well, maybe it's not as, as great as a service to, you know, that others might be able to render but sometimes there really is an incapacity in the case of this paralytic today. He couldn't do anything. Totally paralyzed and helpless. He, he completely at the mercy, really, of others. You can think of this as sometimes, you know, and it can be people in the hospital, it could be people in prison, it could be people in purgatory. And we are able to help these people if we are simply willing to, to reach out to be conscientious and thoughtful. Our Lord, in the case of this paralytic, because of the faith, oftentimes we find our Lord doing things the other way around, but you know, because of the faith of these individuals, our Lord jumps right to the supernatural. He goes for the spiritual works of mercy first. Your sins are forgiven. It's not often that we, we see our Lord able to do this. Right straight, boom, go right for <laughs> first, First things first, the soul. Sometimes he has to enliven the faith of the individual first. It's all right, all right, you know, I'll make up the mud, I'll put it in your eyes, I'll go wash in the pool of Shiloh. Because he needs to inculcate in them faith. And so he, he comes down to our level to give them, you know, the, the spiritual, the corporal works of mercy. He comes down to their level. We can't, we can't work those spiritual works of mercy first. We come down to the level of an individual who needs to be healed. 
And this is what we find actually happening in this parable. Well, there's, so we got those that blocked the way, <laughs> even whether it's conscientious or not, they're blocking the way. <laughs> you prevent me from getting the Lord. You've got to get out of my way. Um, but we also have those that, while they appear to be, and this is an interesting thing, you know, those who appear to be near the Lord, well, there's the appearance and then there's the reality. Who's closer to our Lord? All those stuffed in the house with our Lord listening to him preach? <laughs> or the four who ripping up the room? <laughs> <laughs> trying to let a guy down. Who's closer to our Lord? Who's really closer? It's a good question. Because some of those inside who appear to be close to the Lord, our Lord actually, He faults them. Why do you let these thoughts rise in your heart? There's a fault committed. They've let their hearts cling to something which is wrong. They should have, they should have prevented these thoughts in their mind. You know, the temptation is saying, oh, who is this? How dare he talk like that? Well, who have you come to listen to? <laughs> I mean, why did you stuff yourself in a room with a bunch of other people being cramped and uncomfortable? Why did you come here to listen to him preach, to talk, to teach? They lacked faith. They needed proof. How dare he talk like, talk like that? Because they didn't have the faith. And he said, so that you might believe. Turning to the paralytic. Rise, take up your mat, and go home. And he did. Without any hesitation. That obedience and faith that we all need to have. To hear the voice of obedience. And realizing the strength in the voice of obedience. He who hears you, hears me. As long as the command is that, in the simple, in the very simplest things, how pleasing that must have been, what merit that individual might have received, only God will, only will, will only know when we get to heaven. God willing, when we get there, uh, we all hope. For that rising, taking up his mat, and going home. The simplest things in our duty, you know, in the state of, in our states of life, can work great merit before God. You know, today we celebrate St. Anthony, you know, of the abbot, St. Anthony of the desert, one of the desert fathers. You know, he lived a monastic life. He didn't, didn't go around necessarily. I mean, he did sometimes, but generally he hid himself away in secluded places. And yet, he drew people. If we're living our faith... One of the signs, true signs of our faith, and that we're living our faith, is when we draw people to Christ. It has to be one of the things that, and it's not, sometimes it can be in hidden ways. Our Lord doesn't, it doesn't mean that we may be drawing people to the faith. And our Lord wants to humble us and hide it from us. St. Francis does talk about this little brother that, you know, well, how am I supposed to, where's my opportunity to draw anyone to Christ? All I do is clean bathrooms, sweep floors, and cook for people. It's all I do. Yeah, but if you're doing it for the love of God, God's hiding those works. And then, you know, people like Father John Joseph get up and go, wow, you, I'm so great. Look at the whole world. It's hanging on my words. No, <laughs> that grace didn't come for Father John Joseph. It comes from our Lord. And it's our Lord who's the one who's touching hearts and turning people to Him. But we have to do our part. And if we're faithful in doing what God calls us to do, then this grace to bring a soul to Christ happens. Even in the least and most hidden and insignificant things, it's like, well, what am I doing for a soul here? If I'm being faithful to what God wants, even to the simple thing, get up, <laughs> pick up your mat and go home, then we can be drawing souls to Christ. Let us be attentive to the needs of our brothers and sisters in Christ and ask ourselves constantly, you know, to be aware of perhaps someone who's being prevented, asking our Lord to help and assist those who may be, well, not being helped. Maybe we're blocking their way. You know, let us be these four who help our brothers and sisters in Christ to come to Christ and not be a hindrance to them. And if we are to ask our Lord to help, help open our eyes 
so that we can see the needs of one another and help one another so that we might all draw ourselves, beginning with yourself, but we might work together and draw one another to Christ. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,